Welcome, everybody, and uh, a big hello on the 2nd of January 2024. Uh, we've embarked a new year, new beginnings, and uh, it's that time of year, really, when we start to look at our growth, uh, development, new things that we want in, in this coming year, changes that we might want to make. So what better um subject or topic to talk about than goal setting but we're going to talk about goal setting with a little bit of a twist we're actually going to bring in the um, hot topic of self-sabotage because actually people you'll see that people will be setting their goals all excited motivated enthusiastic but give it a couple of weeks and that starts to die down the the, the hype yeah. starts to die down um, and really, we want to know what that is and why that is and how we can prevent that from happening. So how can we actually create goals and then achieve them? So on this episode, I have the pleasure um, of my esteemed guest, uh, Radius Ra Thompson. Is that, is that yes. correct? Radiance Thompson. Radiance yes. Thompson. Thank you. Uh, so I'll just introduce a Radiance quickly. So Radiance has performed coaching and healing sessions with hundreds of clients over spanning over five continents. She uh, in 2017 she graduated with in, in, from the University of California with a degree in biological sciences as a single mom of two daughters. Soon after graduating, she began working in the biotech industry with a focus on treating cancer cancer patients. Exciting. Now she works on creating medication using stem cell therapy um, and she uses the HEAL method to help heart-led uh, heart leaders, entrepreneurs and professionals to own their gifts, find their untapped potential and fulfill their purpose so they can serve at the highest capacity without self-sabotage and without self-sacrifice. Uh, Radiance has also featured in the Voyage LA magazine um, and the M Makes Money show with Emily Wilson, Wilcox, sorry. Radiance is mission is to heal 1 million people so they can fulfill their purpose and use their gifts uh, to build a legacy um, that outlives them. So th that's, um, you've been really busy, Radiance, and um, the work that you do is so inspiring and meaningful and obviously um, to help uh, future generations to come. So um, welcome. Yes, thank you so much for having me. It's great to have you and it's great to learn about, um, you know, inspirational people across the globe because you, you're based in the States, aren't you? And I, I am. Yeah, so it's amazing to be able to connect with people across the globe. Uh, so really, I uh, just want you to tell uh, the viewers and the listeners a little bit about a bit more about yourself. Obviously, we're talking about goal setting, so people's aspirations and things that they yeah. want. Um, and then we're talking about self-sabotage. So self-sabotage often comes from hidden traumas uh, mm. or hidden, like self-limiting beliefs. Um, so really, what started you on your own healing journey? Yes, yes. Um, you know, that's, that's such a long story. I'm going to do my best to keep it as short as possible. But what really Absolutely. started it was um, in 2018, I had realized like I had really, really high anxiety, extremely mm -hmm. high depression, very mm -hmm. low self-worth, very low confidence. I mean, in 2018, I probably wouldn't be able to have this conversation with you um, mm -hmm. because my, I would, you know, trip up on my words to the point where I second guessed everything that I had to say. And, you know, I actually went to a therapist and he, he has witnessed my transformation over the last five years. And he said, you know, when you first came to me, you looked like a scared rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> and I was very jumpy and like, um, you know, I had a lot of self-love issues. So mm -hmm. when I found um, a Reiki healer on Facebook that just said, I, this can make you feel better. That's literally what it said. You know, it can make you feel better. And I just said, you know, me, you know, I, I want to feel better. You know, yeah. I had gotten out of a very toxic relationship. I was, you know, a, a single mom again. Uh -huh. um, and um, I just wanted to change. I wanted to be a better mom. I wanted to come home happier. And I wanted to just know that I could create a life that felt good. 
So I went to Reiki for um, consistently for over a year and my whole life started to change. I instantly felt a shift. Um, and again, I was consistent though. I, I went for over a year and I had done a lot of personal development when it came to reading books and changing how I felt and thought about myself. And the energy help, the energy healing along with the therapy really um, was like a, a huge like jump start to creating um, who I am now. So I got started on my journey because I just wanted to feel better. And I wanted to know that life wasn't just me going to work every day, working 50, 60 hours a week to support my kids. And that was it, you know, that, that I didn't want it to feel like that was all my life was gonna be. Yeah, beautiful. So it's just really like the difference we talk about between like just surviving or actually thriving in life and ha having some passion, something that you're passionate about, something yeah. that gets you excited when, when you wake up in the morning and, and actually wanting to live. And yeah. like you described there, when people are stuck in anxiety or they're stuck in that in that trap, they can yeah. really feel like uh, that there's nothing else or or that it, that will last forever. But once you come out of that trap, then kind of the world is your oyster and you can be as creative yeah. as you want with it. And there's no limit. So that's a that's really beautiful. Um, you know, your story is um, it, it's really lovely to hear that you were able to break out of that and then envisage something bigger and better for yourself. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So after that, um, I started to, you know, I had actually gone through a lot of like different entrepreneurial journeys. Right. I had, you know, went from MLM and then um, I was actually talking to people randomly at gas stations at, you know, grocery stores, you know, but that now that I'm looking back, I'm like, well, that helped me realize, you know, you can talk to people, you know, how do I practice talking to people? How do I practice putting myself out there? So yeah. now I can easily talk to people. Um, and then it, I got into health coaching because I went to culinary school and I was like, okay, I want to help people feel better. Food helps people feel better all the time. So I started to do health coaching. And then when I started my Reiki healing journey, that's when I realized my gift and my purpose is to help people with their healing with their feeling better about themselves mm -hmm. and saying, how can I become the best version of me mm -hmm. for my family, for my business, for my legacy? So it started, it didn't start from like a linear pathway. It was very much like a windy road. Yeah, yeah. And that's usually the way it is, uh, rather than like a straight line. Sometimes yeah. you have to fail to, to succeed, to know what doesn't work in order to know what will work. So that's us. That's beautiful. So within that, like prior to, it's great that you got on your healing journey and you're in a much better place. But um, prior to that, when things weren't great in terms of like when we're talking about uh, self sabotage. Uh, so what is self sabotage? Sub is basically when people block their own success or prevent themselves from achieving their own goals. Uh, we know that it's conscious or it can be unconscious. Usually, it's an unconscious uh, pattern, and it can really affect people's personal and professional um, success as well and then as and then their mental health as well because it leads to this profound um anxiety which which just um continues until somebody's able to get out of that self-sabotage cycle so what 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 um uh, what can you add to that in terms of self-sabotage and was that an element that, that you had in your own life yes 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 so um when it comes to self-sabotage, what it is, it's you getting in your own way in the most simplest terms. It's you knowing that there's something that you need to do. And then you say you're going to do it. Maybe you even plan for it. Maybe you yeah. even tell your friends or you put it on social media that you're going to do it. And then you start to do it. And then you find different reasons for why you cannot do it. Perhaps instead of focusing on writing that post, if you're a business owner, you start to watch Bridgerton. Or perhaps instead of, um, exercising because you've made this big lofty goal of losing like 35, 40 pounds, you start to unconsciously open the refrigerator and you're reaching for that sweet treat. Or if you know that this, you're in a relationship that isn't feeling great, you know, you know that it's actually not serving you. You know that it's not going to get you to that next level or that it's not going anywhere yet. You know, you get lonely at 11 o'clock at night and next thing you know, you're texting that person on the um in, in the evening saying, hey, come over. You know, that's self-sabotage. Yeah. It's you getting in your own way of what you know that you should be doing, yet you continue not to do the, the thing that you should be doing anyway. And there's a lot of reasons why we do this. Um, it could be because of unconscious patterns, of course. It could be because also we are so 
attached to our current situation, our current circumstances, mm -hmm. that we find ways to recreate our current circumstances because we want to stay in our current reality. Mm. We haven't found a way to say that that reality that we say we desire is something that we can consciously create. Mm -hmm. So we're unconsciously recreating the same reality over and over again. Yeah, that's a, so powerful, isn't it? And usually it's an unconscious pattern whereby we are even addicted to recreating that 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 pattern over and over again because it somehow becomes our comfort zone. Um, mm -hmm. And if it's self-defeating, which is why it's then called self-sabotage, uh, yeah. it obviously it leads to a, a really painful outcome like self-regrets, shame, guilt, uh, mm -hmm. self-perpetuating. So, yeah, I, and just to add to that, usually, it's, it, like we said, it's the way we're programmed and it's often something that we see as a threat, mm -hmm. something that we are afraid of because our prime, basic, most important human need is actually safety. So we will yeah. everything in our power to remain safe. So anything that is, we perceive as a threat, we will avoid it, even if it's good for us. So yeah. um, so we, we, we will do whatever we can, um, yeah. uh, which is then becoming into avoidant behavior, which makes us sway away from actually our goals, which yeah. is, yeah. And usually it's the mismatch between our values, which is what we want, what we aspire, what our goals are and our behavior. And this is when the whole cognitive dissonance uh, thing comes in mm. as well with the psychological di discomfort we feel due to those internal contradictions. And from the outside world, when people are looking at us or viewing people who have are going through this, they just can't understand. But actually right. it's real a very real internal contradiction that people have that, oh. that, that causes a huge difference between what they want and what they're actually doing. Mm -hmm. And it almost feels like the person is helpless. And the longer they do it, the more hopeless they become. And mm -hmm. the more they start the more the more they start to then self-doubt um and, and lose that belief in themselves. That's why to catch it in its tracks, to understand it. And we'll go on to this in a little while about how to stop self-sabotage. Uh, the longer we do it, the the, the, the worse it gets and, and, and the worse the outcome for people. Um, okay. Self-awareness is basically the, the start of, of stopping the cycle and starting the right. cycling journey, isn't it? So, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. I love that you said about the danger aspect and in, in yeah. how we're constantly finding ways to, you know, ensure our own survival. And one of the things that... Um, that um, Yvette Rose says in her book with uh, metaphysical anatomy is she says that there's difference between danger that is actually posing a threat and our perceived danger. So we have to know our difference, that difference and how to determine what our level of safety is. So yeah. safe choice doesn't necessarily mean it's a choice that's going to benefit our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be trying to make a choice that is feeling safe for your business. Like, okay, I shouldn't take this risk. I shouldn't take this leap because this is making me feel unsafe. However, is it always the healthiest choice that's going to benefit your life? Mm -hmm. So you have to know the difference between a safe choice that's posing that you're trying to feel, um, you're trying to feel safe from like a, something that's opposed of a threat to your life, to your safety, to mm -hmm. your actual way of being. And a choice that's actually going to help you propel you forward, but may not feel safe in your body. So yeah. your body can also be triggered by past circumstances that make you feel unsafe. However, it may not necessarily mean that you're protecting yourself from something that's going to um, that's going to hurt you. It could mean that you're actually preventing yourself from making a, a decision that can propel yeah. you forward in your business and in your in your life. So you have to also make sure that you attune your nervous system to different levels of safety. And that takes time. So when you're making these big lofty goals, especially in the New Year's resolution, where you're like, okay, I want to do this and I want to do that for the next year. You know, we have 2024, it's the year of the dragon. We have leap year. There's actually an extra day this year. So, you know, we have a lot more things that we can do in this time. And we're like, okay, well, how am I going to do all of these goals in this amount of time? Well, how about you start doing little steps every day, micro steps to create that macro vision so that way you don't overwhelm your nervous nervous system with habits that it hasn't attuned itself to doing yet yeah absolutely 
this is so powerful what you're talking about now and this is a, a, a lot of people go through this and they're not even aware that they're going through it um this self-defeating de behavior that we're talking about is often uh, very very pain um painful and hard to break and it's usually what like what you said a coping mechanism that somebody has developed to actually cope with a past trauma so it's and it what it's doing is preventing you now from achieving your goal uh mm -hmm. or achieving something that you want because of what you previously learned to how to survive but as a mechanism of how to survive but actually that's no longer useful it's actually now self-defeating it's actually yeah. preventing you from achieving that the things that you want so something that you learned say in childhood or very early on in life yeah. to survive uh it's it's no longer uh it's it's no longer needed but the difference is that the subconscious doesn't recognize the difference mm -hmm. and it thinks it needs to keep to continue to still using that use that pattern in order to protect itself to stay safe so it might actually be afraid of something that is what the person needs and what the person right. needs. Right. that's why it becomes self-defeating and why it's called self-sabotage so really really powerful and this is something a lot of people don't understand that, that that's happening to them and that, that they are actually doing it to themselves uh, and this is the reason they can't make the break the chain almost Right, right. And it's just so because as someone that has to constantly that is choosing, I'm saying I'm I choose to constantly evolve. I know that not everybody's on yeah. this like constant yeah. growth path, but a lot of us that are listening to this podcast are. So if you're choosing to grow, if you're choosing to evolve, then giving yourself that time and space to evolve is uh, is actually essential too, because we can be very harsh on ourselves. Yeah. We're expecting big monumental changes in a very short amount of time. And then when we don't reach that goal, then we start to be even more harder on ourselves. And we're like, okay, well, I haven't reached that goal yet. So then it becomes a means to an end where we're like okay I'm not where I want to be and I'm not liking where I am right now and then we're so focused on getting to where we want to be that we're not focused on the present so even that can be something that causes self-sabotage because we're so focused on being somewhere else that we're not actually focused on what we should be doing right now yeah and it can be shameful as well so one of the things that Eckhart Tolle says is to have something called awakened doing. So when you have a goal and you're doing that goal and you're working toward that goal and you're not there yet, stop focusing on getting there and actually allow yourself to enjoy the present of doing the activities Perfect. that and even some of those activities you may not like to do and that's okay and if you can do those activities in a joyful way it can allow that time to actually pass faster instead of you yeah. being uh, miserable doing some of the things that you may not like yeah. to do yet you know have to be done to get you to that to that goal so a lot of times we may self-sabotage as well because we're like okay well I'm supposed to be liking everything that I'm doing right now to get to this particular goal and that's not the case either some things you just have to do and it's it's one of those things where you have to give yourself permission and um that space to negotiate with yourself and yeah. saying okay is this something that I may not like to do, but I have to do because it's going to get me to this particular goal? And how can I start to build up my nervous system to doing this thing that I may not want to do, yet I know is going to help me get to my goal? So mm -hmm. finding a way to have a way in doing, being okay with doing the things that you may not like to do, and giving your nervous system time and space to calibrate to those yeah. new levels of yeah. safety to doing those things can really help you overcome self-sabotage. Yeah, really, really, really good. Yeah, like your physiology has to be aligned with the, the changes that you're making. And really, uh, the, in, the the power is in the incremental changes that you're talking mm -hmm. about, rather than like try, uh, procrastinating and delaying something to a certain point. Right. Then, because it, then it feels more scary. Like, mm -hmm. um, I was just speaking to a client the other day, and we were talking about goals for this year. And, and it was like, well, you've got these goals, that doesn't mean you start them and you do l l lots of action on December the 1st for example 2024 you're actually more likely to achieve your goals if you do something small every single day in right. the direction of your goals that they're more likely then to transpire rather than if you d leave it and um and then you try to force yourself which then feels uncomfortable uh yeah. to, to the body and the, and the mind and you right. get that alignment which is which is di causes discomfort mm -hmm. so just as an extension of that do you want to just explain to to the listeners and the viewers what is the difference between self sabotage and self sacrifice? Mm -hmm. 
You know, they can actually be one and the same and two different things. Yeah. So I'm going to give you an example of both. So how does self-sacrifice and self-sabotage merge? In my opinion, self-sabotage and self-sacrifice merge when your people-pleasing patterns are getting in the way of you doing something that you know needs to be done for yourself and it's causing you not to achieve that goal. So for example, if you are a business owner and you know that you have a particular price for your, your uh, packages, and for, for whatever reason, you decide to lower that price of the package, not because the person, um, not because it's someone that you know or someone that you care about, or it's something that you're like, okay, well, I won't get this amount of money if I give, hold on, I'm not saying this correctly. I won't get this person to sign up with me if I have this higher price. So I'm gonna lower this price because this person is saying that I they can only do this amount of money. And it may be a people-pleasing pattern that's causing you to do that because you're trying to have a client in there instead of saying, hey, this is my price, either take it or leave it. So there's a part of you that's saying, I need to make sure that I please this person instead of pleasing myself and having my... Um, Having my own self-worth say, I'm going to be okay with losing this person instead of, um, instead of, um, instead of, um, I'm, I'm okay with losing this person instead of, uh, and move and moving on to someone else that will actually pay me for my prices, excuse me. Mm -hmm. So that can be a people pleasing pattern. Another people pleasing pattern is saying the things that you uh, think people want to hear yeah. instead of being true to yourself and authentic to yourself. Um, maybe this is a better example because my words got a little tripped up last time, but saying the things that are true to you and being authentic to you and being okay with people walking away if they're not in alignment with what you're saying when it comes to your business and when it comes to relationships, that can be a self-sabotaging and a people-pleasing pattern, which is self-sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And um, because you're sacrificing who you are to keep that person around and yep. it's a self-sabotaging pattern because now you're losing the people that could actually gravitate towards your message because you're saying what you think people want to hear instead of being true to yourself in that moment. Mm -hmm. So that could be um, a self-sacrifice and self-sabotage like merge. Now yep. the difference is, let's say you have, um, you know that you're calling is to be of self-sacrifice. Think of people like Mother Teresa who yeah. constantly self-sacrificed themselves over and over again for the greater good of humanity, but that was her calling. That was what she was meant to do. It was her connection to the divine, to God, to universe that said, this is who I'm supposed to be and these are the people that I'm supposed mm -hmm. to help. That was her self-sacrifice. Mm -hmm. That was not self-sabotage for her because she was fulfilling her purpose. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So it depends on what the intention is, what, what the right. purpose of what you're doing is. Uh, and well, you spoke a little bit about, um, you know, people pleasing or showing up, saying or doing things in order to fit in or please other people as in telling them what they want to hear. But I right. think that, that that's a very short term fix because uh, the, pa the power of, a, I mean, sustainability only comes with authenticity that that right. that's basically the equation the the, the 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 if you're in it for the long haul it, it can only but survive uh with authenticity even if you're saying or doing something that people don't agree with don't like and it means you don't fit in but you're actually being true to your own your own self which is right. the most powerful thing you can do because you're identifying with yourself in a pure way um that's uh, right. yeah so I see what you mean and and yeah often like many people <laughs> self-sacrifice for many many years until they realize and then what comes into that afterwards and the reason why it's so important again to stop that in its tracks as soon as possible because it, then it becomes a self-betrayal so you yes you that in order to serve others or safeguard others or yes. do whatever you need to do to fit in or not to rock the boat or shake the status quo you've actually betrayed yourself so the best right. thing you can do for yourself and for everybody around you is actually just be true to yourself uh yeah right and it breeds resentment and it breeds like constant yeah. um what is it that like an inner strife within yourself because of that self-betrayal and then that person that you were people pleasing for sometimes you may even expect them to do the same for you and then they it's don't. not so then it becomes a manipulative well, they're not, they don't <laughs> right yeah it, be, it it just becomes a very um 
uh, toxic pattern. Yeah, uh, that yeah. So the the power is in the self awareness, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and and then the action that comes as as a result of that in order to change things. So um, in terms of uh, symptoms, uh, like we, we talked a little bit about it, um, of, of self-sabotage. So we've mm -hmm. just spoken there a little bit about, about setting goals that may be too high or too low. Again, that could be because of people pleasing. But in actual fact, we should be setting goals that are out of reach, but not out of sight. So if they're out of reach, mm -hmm. that means that we do have to get out of our comfort zone. It is something that we want. And um, it might um, it might mean there's a little bit of discomfort in our right. actions because it's not something that we're used to doing on a daily basis. So we're stretching our comfort zone, but actually um, it, it, it's, it's in, in sight and it's something that we know that we can have. Um, and we, we should be able to have it. It's usually us ourselves who stop ourselves from getting it. So, um, and the other one is, I just want to talk about quickly, is about the negative self-talk and the extreme mm. criticism that people have. Mm. So um, people are very, very quick to judge themselves, uh, yeah. and talk down to themselves or believe, because um, there's something that I posted recently, uh, a few days ago, actually, which is about a goal setting course that I've got, uh, which has launched now just before the new year. But actually, it's, it's, it's goal setting with a twist. And what, what's implemented is is the concept of self-love. So usually, it, because people don't truly love themselves enough mm -hmm. uh, to believe that they deserve to, to achieve the goals or the desires that they have, they are somehow self-sabotage their own goals um and what comes into mm. the, is this whole self-critique or not believing or feeling deservedness towards actually having those things um to to get to that desired uh location wherever they want to be uh, and that is absolutely profound because if you believe it, you can have it that's the only difference between actually having it if you don't yeah. believe that then 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 somehow you will stop yourself from getting it so mm. that self-belief self-love is so powerful mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know I want to touch on that point because I feel like self-sabotage can be a symptom of not having enough self-love however mm -hmm. the part of you that protects yourself from that um that danger from that post threat yeah. I feel like is also the biggest act of self-love because protecting yourself from danger and yeah. saying I'm not going to put myself in a position where I am hurting myself is also a form of self-love so I feel like it can be both a lack of self-love at times but it also can just be you not realizing that your conscious and unconscious have to be in sync mm -hmm. so yeah. when we bring those unconscious patterns to the forefront and we say okay well how am I how am I um how am I not obtaining my goals? Why am I not obtaining my goals? What am I, what am I attached to? What am I causing myself to um, get in my own way? Is it a cognitive dissonance? Is it something that has to be healed in my ancestry? Is there something that has to be healed when it comes to um, my, my inner child? You know, am I repeating certain cycles that happened in my childhood? You know, when we start ask, start reverse engineering and saying, Absolutely. okay, um, you know, is there a cycle that I'm repeating that happened during those first seven years of my life that it keeps on repeating again and again and again? You know, when we look at our inner child in those first three, seven year cycles of our development, we usually see patterns that continue on and on because we haven't closed those loops and we are repeating acts of protecting ourselves and self-love yet there's yeah. a part of us that doesn't feel like we deserve That's it. whatever it is right. that we're going for and we're recreating our own reality so I feel like it's a mixture of us not having self-love at times and also just not knowing how our unconscious are controlling our lives absolutely so powerful uh and and the difference is 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 the perception the perception of the threat mm -hmm. so like you said if you've learned that some something is scary or actually it's not even if it's just not familiar like right. um you know uh, if you've got a dysfunctional sort of setup growing up that's right. going to be your familiar so you're going to try to recreate it right. um, so what the, in the adult brain what what the difference is of course the, the safety is is the number one thing that that we need and want and seek but the 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 problem is the subconscious doesn't know the difference between actually what's real and what's perceived and actually right. the threat that the, 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 the where the the trauma started is actually not there anymore but 
the brain the, the unconscious brain thinks it is hence it tries to protect you from necessarily something that you want so that's why that that's why um people that's why people have unfulfilled wishes dreams goals um aspirations this right. is this is uh, the the big reason and obviously this is a really big topic because you know self sabotage if if left you know to its own devices over a long period of time can really cause a lot of pain anxiety stress uh, uh and and really get into people's daily lives whereby it is controlling them uh, yeah. and as more and more fa failure adds up and piles up the more likely the person is to, to, to not feel like they are good enough to then go for what they want. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's it's definitely a self-defeating pattern within itself. So shall we have a look at, to as in like, we're almost coming to an end, but we just got a bit more to discuss about possibly ways that people can stop the self-sabotage. Uh, the first one that I mentioned earlier was about... Um, about awareness so to like we've just we've talked about it haven't we about understanding your patterns your habits self-repeating cycles um and one thing that i was going to suggest is write down your goal and say i want this is what I, I want to achieve so and so but i keep doing so and so so you you look at the goal and you look at the behavior and basically your uh, your answer is is obviously in behave in your behavior to find out what's actually blocking you where you need to start so can you just build on that for me please yes yes so one of the things that i use with my clients is my heal method so it okay. stands for h e a l heal stands um h stands for harmonize your thoughts e for elevate your emotions a a for align your body and L for let go. So when you harmonize your thoughts, meaning that you be more objective with your thoughts, Michael Singer in his book, um, Untethered, in his book, he talks about being extremely objective with your thoughts, meaning that you almost have a third person perspective on looking at what your thoughts are doing and how they're recreating, how they're creating your, your beliefs, your emotions, how it's affecting your, your biochemistry. So being extremely objective with your thoughts, like is your thoughts really yours? Are they coming from an outside source? Are they coming from your lineage, where you grew, how you grew up? Is it coming from some sort of traumatic experience that you've had? Being objective with your thoughts is extremely essential. And then going from there, elevating your emotions. So how can you start feeling the feeling of accomplishing your goal? For example, maybe you have a, th a thought that I want to accomplish my goal and you think that it's going to... Um, um, help the world. You know, maybe you think you're going to heal millions of people like myself, right? So yeah. I'm going to heal millions of people, elevate your emotion. How can you feel the love, the appreciation, the joy, the empowerment, the confidence right now in that thought? So mm -hmm. now you're powering up that thought and then you can align your body. So when I say align your body, that means starting to attune your, um, your body to doing the thing. So mm -hmm. I like to do something called rehearsing. Mm -hmm. So I will um, look at my, like, look at myself doing the thing, like look at who I am as I am right now, doing the thing that I say I'm going to do. And I will see myself doing that for 17 seconds. And I do that because the reticular activating system in your brain, once you have that vision for 17 seconds, you're programming your brain to doing it. Mm -hmm. So Give yourself those micro steps to doing that thing, of course, yeah. like millions of people that's going to take one step at a time to create yeah. that macro vision. So align your body to doing it mm -hmm. and then letting go. So letting go of what's getting in your way. Perhaps it's a negative thought. Perhaps you think that if if you help a million people, you're going to be subjected to a lot of ridicule. Perhaps you think that if you help a million people that you may not be able to maintain that level of, 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 um, of responsibility. Maybe you think it's a lot for you to do. And you're starting to have all of these thoughts that circulate about how you may not be able to um, fulfill your responsibilities. Maybe you feel like you're going to be um, lonely because you'll be doing all of this work. Perhaps you feel like you're going to be surrounded by people that only want you for what you do and not have real love surrounded uh, you're surrounded by. So start letting go of those thoughts and those feelings that aren't serving you in your body, in your nervous system. And when you start doing my heal method, you start to give yourself that, that, um, that boost 
Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to say to give you to get you to that level of where you know that you can accomplish that goal. And I go through that process in my head throughout the day. And I will do like, I have like this goal board. You can't see it because I have the San Francisco there, but I have this goal board and I put it on there and I said, okay, I'm going to do at least a few things on this, on this every single day. Mm -hmm. And so far it's been doing wonderful. So um, I say this to say, because I started that again this year, but I say this to say, if you can give yourself the time and space every single day to do a few things, mm -hmm. micro steps every day, I guarantee that macro vision can come to fruition for you. However, mm -hmm. give yourself the space to do it. Try not to be too harsh on yourself. And I know that you can create your goals and manifest them into this reality for 2024. Yeah, beautiful. That that's such a powerful uh, like um, sequence of different steps that you can take, uh, and it is it, it's it's progressive as well. So one leading on from another, and it's it's you know I can see that how that could really work in reality. So like taking action is literally such a critical step because um, usually it's pr procrastination, which is the counterstone for self defeating behavior within itself. Once you start taking the action, you build momentum towards your goals and actually it helps you to reduce that fear and you then start to rebuild that sense of self-worth that we're talking about and in that process it's completely normal to seek support so speak to a right. coach speak to a mentor because they will help you stay accountable and that will keep you energized into those small changes that you need to make on a daily basis and the only other thing that will add to that is practicing mindfulness throughout the whole process because these self-defeating behaviors are painful to break the yeah. the coping mechanisms which we've um used to deal with past traumas um and they're actually preventing you from achieving your goals that, that are meaningful to you so once you start unpacking that you can yeah. see the impact of these patterns on your professional personal um everything on your life in every capacity so it's really important to sit with those difficult feelings be gentle with yourself as they come up um practice mindfulness whether that's walking mindful breathing mm -hmm. um having a hobby a journaling anything and when I say having a hobby I, I mean like painting drawing anything that's creative uh that, that's actually meditative but being mindful of yourself acknowledging yourself throughout the whole process and that uh, having self-compassion so not like we said self-criticizing blaming shaming ourselves for something we haven't done before now um feeling bad about ourselves actually you start at any point and from that point the more you build the momentum uh the more you want to continue and actually the more you feel better about yourself but if as long as you're good to yourself throughout that process you're more likely to achieve that um and obviously communicating with people the right people like we said perfect getting yeah. help or a trusted family member or friend somebody you know who's got your back and, and can support you through that process so 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 important so just um to kind of as we come to a close, the last question I have is, so how can healing help business owners uh, with revenue um, growth and impact? Mm. Yes. So um, I already spoke about the heal method. However, yes. when it comes to healing, um, that's like multifaceted. So I, when I work with clients, there's different types of healing that I do with them when it comes to ancestral healing. Um, I do also energy healing um, yeah. and how it helps them is first you can start with the ancestral healing that can help you start um, reverse engineering how certain influences that you may not even be aware of are influencing your daily decisions every single day. Yeah. So for example, I've had clients that have had um, parents that um, had really big lofty dreams that unfortunately they didn't um, accomplish yes. currently. You know, I don't want, I don't want to say ever accomplished because Colonel Sanders created KFC in his 60s. So you never know when someone has that instant, like I'm going to do yeah. it <laughs> but at, the, at this moment. They hadn't accomplished their dreams. And it, um, for example, a client of mine, they had um, a parent that had multiple businesses, multiple dreams, and none of them came to fruition. Yeah. So when I started to work with this particular client, I had told them, okay, well, how are you repeating behaviors of this particular parent that didn't accomplish their dreams? And what are you doing to change that? So oh. when it comes to healing, it can really help you with understanding how you're recreating your 
childhood environment in as an adult and how you can stop doing that as well when it comes to ancestral healing. Yeah. And in addition to that, with energy healing, um, I use Reiki. And when it comes to that, it's about you really um, finding that light again that you may have lost because of traumatic circumstances or because of conditioning or because of um, past pain that you haven't necessarily let go of. Yeah. So with Reiki, it's about putting that light back into our vessels and knowing that we can use that same light to uh, manifest our desires and to create a path for, for us to um, be a guide for ourselves and others. Yeah, beautiful. And I, I love that one, that one, the, the one you mentioned at the beginning. It is so common about recreating uh, kind of what our parents showed us uh, and what they taught us. And like they say, monkey see, monkey do. It's not, not what somebody will say to you. It's not what they will say to you to do. It, you will right. absolutely to the T copy what you see. You right. will copy what you see and you will try to recreate it and it, it affects all of us. So uh, it's completely normal. And obviously, if it's not self-serving, you know, you need to change the pattern up and you right. need to create change for your life and, and, you know, break the chain there. So so really powerful. Thank you so much. I can see how that can be so helpful to so many people, um, right. especially business owners, as we're speaking, um, mm -hmm. people who want to create impact, people who want to grow, develop, create something meaningful, putting putting it out there, something that provides a service or a product to others. Um, and if you're not healed yourself, it's really difficult to be able to do that for other people and really grow to your potential because a lot of your work, and my work essentially is really to help people to 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 to, to maximize um and reach their potential right right and that's that's where you know uh, that's where the happiness comes for, for me in terms of in terms of my business being able to do that for people and you you obviously know the feeling when you're able to help somebody to elevate out of their a, a zone or a trap that they've they've kept themselves into and they 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 get they have do and be more for themselves it's really right. a beautiful thing to see so um i'd love to uh, like to thank you basically for being here today it's been amazing to to have your input or your your inspiration your thoughts um and your guidance and uh I, first of all i'd just like to ask if the viewers and listeners want to find you how, how can uh, how can they connect Yes. So I'll be posting uh, my links so you can find me on Instagram, it's Radiance Thompson on Instagram and also Radiance Thompson on Facebook. And then there will also be a freebie that says uh, self mass from self sabotage to self mastery that I'll also be providing for you guys to uh, download for free. And you can have my series of steps with using my heal method to get you out of um, any type of self sabotaging pattern. So you can create that aligned way of getting to your 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 goals uh, through self mastery. That's absolutely perfect. I think that'll be really helpful. Um, so yeah, thank you. I'd like to take a good read of that myself, actually. So thank you. Uh, so with that, um, yeah, I'd just like to cl close the, 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 the session for today. And uh, I'll see you soon. Hey, thank you so much for having yeah. me. And thank you all. Thank you all. I hope everybody enjoyed, enjoyed that as much as I did. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.